What's up everybody? This is the all new 2024 Lexus GX 550. And so about the brand new GX, well, brand new platform, brand new everything. And I mean, if you just look at this thing, it is just so incredibly good looking. I mean, Lexus makes a lot of beautiful cars, but I mean, this GX really, I think shocked everyone when it first came out. But anyway, so as far as the changes here for the new GX, it's on a brand new GAK platform here, same platform that we see on the LX and uh, many of the other vehicles in the Lexus and Toyota truck lineup and uh, still a body on frame legit off-roader here there's the over trail version which is the new version that gives you 33 inch tires and even more off-road capability than a regular gx does and as far as the size it really has changed pretty dramatically it's almost four inches wider it's actually about four and a half inches wider for that over trail version with its over fenders that it has but then you also have a four inch higher vehicle overall and uh, it's also about five inches longer so it has grown nicely but man it looks so dramatic too with the way they pulled back this a pillar here uh, to give you a boxier proportion especially on the sides and also the hood here the deep ridges you have in it this one here we're looking at is a premium plus trim which is the second from the lowest trim actually and it's really cool that lexus brought out these lower trims as well this one has a more reasonable starting price of around seventy-one thousand dollars for this one these start at sixty-four thousand two hundred and fifty for reference but uh you know it's just i think a, a lot of car and a really cool truck for the money but uh you know coming down to the sides here this one just has the ordinary 20 inch wheels this still look really nice but you can get 22s as well as 18s on that over trail version with that knobbier tire we also have these really blocky side mirrors that actually kind of harken, harken back to the fj cruisers and uh, other vehicles of you know many years ago and uh, also love you can get two-tone roof combos with a, a black roof this one uh, doesn't have that but uh, you know looks good either way and just you know the way it sweeps up towards the uh, rear doors there is so cool and then going out to the back i love how you have that light bar that actually has some dimension to it it actually comes out a little bit unlike all the flush you know light bars you see on many other vehicles as is the trend these days you know but this one has some extra dimension some extra visual appeal and i really like that choice from a design standpoint and otherwise you know just a very squared off you know blocky back end looks very very cool and so overall i just think that they absolutely knocked it out of the park home run all around as far as the styling here on the gx it just looks so so cool the interior of the gx is also a massive improvement over the previous generation it is fully brought up to speed here with all the newest lexus stuff very high tech very impressive basically everywhere you look here and lots of great standard equipment as well so anyway first thing you'll notice is uh, these double screens you have a 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster as standard and you have a 14 inch touchscreen as standard as well even in that base trim and uh, it's really a strong case to be made for these base trims because there's just so much equipment we're still in the premium plus trim here but uh, you know it's just one up from the base but anyway moving in here to the seats uh, first thing uh, the seats are really soft and comfortable so uh, you get one kind of seat here in the premium trims the over trail trim has slightly different bolstering and then you get massaging seats in the luxury trims but um, so here at the premium though you get heating and ventilation as standard which is awesome that's new lux here it's like the faux leather you get here in these but uh, still super soft and comfortable really great seats you know the bolstering isn't super aggressive that's what the over trail is for but still really nice seats and i love them i've been driving in these seats all day already and they are super comfortable and i really love them honestly and uh but yeah it's really cool you can get massage for the first time in a lexus suv they've previously only had massage in the uh, ls and so now you have it here in these and it's a really nice addition i haven't gotten to try it out just yet but um you know really great that you have that available now moving on to the steering wheel here it's a really great steering wheel one thing that's also great is that it is heated in everything except the base trim and even in the base trim you can get an option package to add on heated steering wheel if you want so you don't have to go up to some big high trim in order to get heated steering wheel like some other companies make you do and so it's a typical lexus wheel though it's uh, got a great nine and three grip nice little 10 and two notches here and usual buttons on it so unlike other modern lexuses like you see with the rx and the tx and the others those have like a very heavy up display focus thing with the steering wheel buttons just controlling the head-up display primarily with this um, even though this one does have a head-up display you still have the actual normal buttons here which I personally really like uh, the head-up display thing isn't too hard to get used to once you know you spend a little bit of time with it but uh, I really love just having the traditional buttons here you also do have this little driver monitor sensor here and that is going to be if you get the traffic jam assist option 
um, which allows you to do hands-free stuff under 25 miles per hour on the highway. Um, but uh, it also will do driver monitoring. And so if it sees you looking away for too long or if you're driving with your hand at the top of the wheel and blocking that sensor, it'll let you know, like, hey, like, you know, you, you need to be paying attention or whatever. So, um, you know, that's one little thing that's interesting. You don't have to get that, but it is nice to have that if you want it. But moving on to the gauges here, like I said, fully digital is standard and they are really nice, very high resolution. Typical setup you see in other Lexus products um, where you have a bunch of different, you know, looks to those gauges. And I love the customization. You can customize what's in the middle. You can customize what's both on the right and the left side there. And there's also different looks there depending on which drive mode you're in. And um, yeah, just very informative there and just a really good gauge cluster. You also do have a head-up display that's an option here. And I think basically all the trims, you don't have to get it if you don't want it, but it's a really nice uh, large head-up display and certainly a nice option if you're into that. And then coming over to the center of the dashboard here, 14-inch touchscreen is standard and uh, it has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, works really well. It's the same system that you know we've been seeing in the past couple of years here from Lexus. It's a fantastic system though. It debuted uh, in the NX and it is just so well done. Nice and quick and snappy. The menus are really simplified and very easy to wrap your head around. There's not a million sub menus. Everything is really nicely arranged, nice and easy to navigate everything. I love the little dials here still built into the screen and also the center volume knob, which is great for passengers. They don't have to reach over in order to change the volume if they want to do that. And so I really like the way this is all set up and it's really cool with the way the dashboard design is too. It's the first GX to have a fully flat dashboard. It's fully horizontal here and uh, is a really cool touch. And uh, you also will see built into that on the passenger side, an extra little cubby there, um, which is a very creative little touch and looks pretty cool too. But coming down here, you have your mode selector knob and it's a nice chunky knob there and a few buttons as well as your little power outlet hiding behind uh, this little area. It's like a faux wood. Looks really nice though. I like the texture and it has a grain to it. You also see the two USB-C jacks there, a usual traditional shifter as well. Um, unlike some other Lexuses that have done the electrical thing, you know, this has a nice chunky shifter as well. And you have your little four wheel drive selector back here and a wireless charging pad, cup holders, and also the center armrest, which is really nice and softly padded. And you open that up and you'll see a nice deep cubby in there. And uh, you can still get a cool box, by the way, in the GX is something I carry over from the last generation that a lot of people really loved. And also speaking of other uh, padding, one thing that's so impressive is all the knee padding. You have it both on your right side and on your left side here. Um, and so you're going to be coddled in luxury here and in nice soft padding, which is something that other, you know, luxury brands still haven't, you know, padded everything. It's kind of crazy, but it feels really nice and plush in here with that. And um, then other things here to note. So you get a moonroof as standard in all trims of the GX, but you can go up and get the dynamic sky roof that's an option here in this. And this is technology we first saw in the RZ. It also was in the Toyota Venza, but this is a new generation version where it's really large. And so the cool thing is, you know, it can go from clear to opaque with just the press of a button, but it also still has a manual cover. So if the opaque thing isn't enough, you can totally block it out still. And, uh, you know, a really cool option and just something really futuristic and new that we haven't really seen in most other car companies, honestly. And so really great that you have that available. Another thing to mention before we head to the back seat is that you have a standard 10 speaker stereo. That's what these premium pluses have. And I've been driving around listening to that stereo all day. And it's a really good, strong stereo still really strong bass. Uh, really clear and crisp and very well done, but you can also go up to a Mark Levinson 21 speaker stereo, but that's you know going to be very, very impressive. I'm sure Mark Levinson stereos are always fantastic here in these Lexus products. But moving on to the second row here in the GX. So um, you'll have a bench seat as standard. You can get captain's chairs in these if you want. And as far as the seating configuration goes, uh, everything except the over trail is seven passenger uh, or six passenger, but uh, you get a third row and everything except the over trail. Over trail does not get a third row at all. There's no option for it or anything. And so, you know, whether you get the bench or the captain's chairs, both ways are going to have really nice, soft, accommodating seats. And I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. I still have several inches of legroom to spare there. You know, this is a large vehicle and it doesn't have massive amounts of rear legroom there, but it is still, you know, a good amount of space and, uh, you know, nice, soft, comfortable seats that are also heated, by the way, in everything except the base trim and the over trail, surprisingly, also uh, don't have the second row heating. But anyway, you have pockets there in those doors and you can see their own climate controls here up front. 
front, along with two more USB-C jacks there. And also they have vents in the roof and a full down center armrest if you get that bench as well, with more cup holders built into it. And then as far as the third row goes here, I was actually shocked. Um, I didn't think that it was going to be that much space. I figured it would just be like a jump seat, but it actually is a usable third row. So again, me being five foot nine with the second row bench, you know, the way it's just set up uh, by default, you can recline that bench so you can have it, you know, uh, a little less leg room if you want, but in the standard, you know, setup, again, me being five nine, I actually clear the, the seat back there and I'm not rubbing my knee up against the seats. And that's pretty impressive to be totally honest. There's even some larger like family crossovers that are, you know, just that's their focus is third rows. The, I don't think this really has that focus, but you know, it still has a roomy third row, just like many of those vehicles does. And it's really easy to get into the third row too, because you know, a lot of other vehicles just have like a tilt and slide kind of thing, but this has the tumble thing um, that we actually saw on prior generations. And uh, it's really easy. Just the levers nice and light flips right up and uh, gets out of your way really well and really quickly and uh, really easy with the spring too, to push it back. And so um, not too much work and um, you know, an actual usable third row. I couldn't believe it. I thought for sure it was going to be, not very usable, but it actually is. You could use this every day as a three row vehicle and it'd be totally doable with that. You also see they have Roman USB-C jacks, cup holders, air vents, all that back there. And even again, being 5.9, I have, you know, a little bit of headroom to spare there too. So you now that's thanks to the nice boxy nature of this vehicle. But yeah, really impressed with just how many people can fit in this thing. Now, the caveat is if you do want to use that third row, then cargo space is nearly non-existent. Very, very tiny there, as you can see. Um, but then of course, it's a power folding third row. So if you're not using the third row, then you have tons of cargo space, of course, more cargo space than the last GX, in fact. And you'll see there's power outlets and, you know, all the other various things back there and there's also beneath the floor a tiny little sliver of a extra cut out there um, nothing too much there but I'm just glad that it's a nice flat floor because we've seen like with the Sequoia and a few others you know they've, they've had to make some compromises um, with some of the hybridization stuff but with this having no hybrid or anything it's a nice flat floor and uh, you know just really a good amount of cargo space there it can be very very usable and you know a nice boxy area and also the other fun things here to mention are that uh, for the first time here in the GX you have an actual power lift gate that goes up instead of to the side um, like you used to have on the old GX's there. Some people might miss the side opening uh, tailgate there, but I really you know think it's nice and easy with this. You also have the kick to open feature and all those modern advancements, and, but it still does also have uh, opening rear glass. You can open that separately. Great for dogs and you know just all kinds of other fun you know applications for that, but overall just a very impressive interior. Again, especially at this vehicle's you know base price. And this one, by the way, as tested, it's like $71,000 the way this is with all all the luxury features you could want really i mean aside from the upgraded stereo and massage um you know and some nicer trim you do get semi aniline leather in those upper trims as well so there are some nice improvements for sure and if you want the best by all means go for it but i think it's a lot of value here in these lower trims but let's start up and go for a drive the gx here has uh, the good old lexus key we've seen for a long time uh still sticking with this key and uh, just a few buttons there are nice texturing though to it never had any complaints with this key and of course it is keyless access keyless entry and push button start and all trims. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off here in the 2024 GX 550. So the first thing that you notice about this vehicle, I think the first thing I'm noticing is the excellent visibility. I love all the glass. They lowered the belt line. You have a flat first time ever horizontal uh, dashboard here for the GX and uh, you know the screens nice and low so I mean excellent visibility you know nice boxy windows and so it just feels so so cool but you really can take in your surroundings we have some beautiful surroundings here in Tucson Arizona and I mean just being able to have these massive windows to take it all in and the availability of you know that massive uh, sky view roof as well is really cool but anyway so very easy to drive you also have all the safety tech with you know 360 cameras available and you know all the other assistance there um, you even have like a smart park feature as standard so I mean lots of stuff there to help you maneuver in tight spaces the other things though that I'm noticing immediately here is you just feel like you're sitting up nice and high and I like this nice high driving position it really fits the vibe and the more trucky nature here of the GX compared to all of its you know competitors and so it just it feels unique and different and special as well it feels like an adventure um, you know having these deep ridges in the hood for example I mean there's you know just a lot here that just makes it feel a 
little more exciting than the average you know, luxury mid-sized SUV for sure. But the impressive thing here is that it's a nice smooth ride. Now these roads that we're on currently are you know, pretty smooth, you know, not too punishing or anything, but it's still, I mean, this is uh, a regular premium plus trim. This is gonna be one of the you know, mass market kind of trims. It uh, doesn't have the adaptive dampers that you can get on the uh, luxury plus version and on the over trail, uh, you'll have those. But uh, you know, even without the adaptive dampers here, still just a nice smooth suspension setup. You have double wishbones in the front, you have a multi-link set up in the rear. And so, I mean, it's gonna you know, give you a nice smooth ride, you know, coil springs all around, of course, and all that. So, you know, it's just really nice and smooth. And of course, being a Lexus, it's nice and quiet in here too, very well refined. That was a large truck just went past and you barely heard it. And especially if you don't go for an over trail trim with its more off-road ready tires, and this premium just having you know, the 20 inch wheels, nice thick sidewalls, but you know, street oriented tires here primarily, you know, it just gives you very little road noise and a nice smooth ride. And part of how it gets all this refinement and smoothness is thanks to this new GAF platform you have. It's shared with the Lexus LX, the Land Cruiser, the Toyota trucks, a bunch of different stuff, but of course has been given the Lexus treatment here, but it gives you extra rigidity for this new platform. And just, you know, that's gonna help you to just have a smoother ride. You also have a wider track here, over three inches wider for the track compared to the last generation or on a longer vehicle. You know, it's just gonna be a little more stable and just feels certainly compared to the old GX, which isn't fair. I mean, that vehicle is basically 15 years old at this point. But I mean, obviously it's gonna be a wild upgrade as far as driving dynamics compared to that. You know, another thing, you have electronic power steering here for the first time in a GX, and that just gives you, you know, more responsive steering. It's actually really nicely weighted though, and this whole vehicle still feels very substantial going down the road. But I mean, everything is just so much more fine-tuned. You have uh, the newest version of the electronic brake booster and all that, and that's really responsive, starts to give you some nice grabbing right towards the top of the brake pedal here, but it's also very progressive, so it's easy to be smooth with your inputs there, and throttle response is really nice, and <laughs> this motor is punchy. I'll talk more about the uh, motor here in a second once we do an acceleration, but you know, just whenever you're cruising along at normal speeds here, you just dip into that motor a little bit, and those turbos just carry you through and just give you this surge of power uh, no matter what RPM you're at and uh, so that's a really nice touch here you know compared to the old V8 and the old one um, which was less powerful as well uh, you know this is just going to just be a huge upgrade as far as performance. Later on today I will also be driving the adaptive suspension model so I will uh, come back with my impressions of how that compares to the space suspension to help you decide whether or not you want to get the adaptive suspension on your GX but uh, you know I can just say that I have no complaints here so far with regular suspension and uh, this whole vehicle just feels really nice going down the road. And now we're briefly out on the highway here for a few minutes. And um, one thing you notice, there is a significant amount of wind noise here. Now, there could be some factors with the weather today contributing to that. But, you know, it's a boxy vehicle. You have big boxy side mirrors and all that. You know, so wind noise is going to be probably a little bit higher. Um, but still totally fine. And, of course, yeah, if you have the radio or anything else going, you know, you're not going to really pay attention to that, honestly. But, um, you know, and another really nice thing here is that because this is on this brand new platform and uh, has the electronic power steering, now you're able to get the more advanced safety stuff. So you have the Lexus Safety Suite Plus 3.0 now, going from the 1.0 system you had in the old GX. And so this is going to be a really huge improvement. So it has the hands-on driver assist where it does uh, lane tracing assist where it'll, you know, keep you within your lane and, you know, help you to just have a little bit of driver support there on the highway. It's still a hands-on system, although it does have traffic jam support here that's available, and that will give you hands-free operation at under 25 miles per hour on certain highways. And so you still have to be paying attention to the road, but it'll be able to do hands-free stuff. And it's a full-speed adaptive cruise control you get as standard. You, know, you get everything really as standard here. You get know, blind spot monitoring, all that usual stuff, automatic emergency braking, or cross-traffic alert. It's just a really seamless cruise around the highway here because it just, you know, can just easily give you extra speed when you need it with those turbos and uh, you know it's just really nice to have the steering support and all that as well if you want it. But I put it up into the sport mode and let's turn down onto this back road and see how it does. Here we go. Alright there we go. And it, oh, man yeah when those turbos get cooking it pulls really nicely. So we have the 3.4 liter turbocharged, twin turbocharged uh, six cylinder engine V6 and uh, it does 349 horsepower, 479 pound feet of torque and it'll add up to about a six and a half seconds zero to 60 time which uh, you know is totally fine for something like this and honestly I think that once you're up and running that's where it feels even punchier than that and um, yeah 
I mean, this thing is rocks. It all runs through a 10 speed automatic transmission to a full time four wheel drive system that uh, has a Torsen limited slip differential in the rear. It's an electronic locking uh, rear diff in the overtrail versions, but here in the other ones here, you also fill up their center locking diff as standard. And, uh, you know, typically like a 50 50 torque split. But anyway, so I mean, it's a, it's a ton of power. I mean, compared to, yes, we don't have a V8 anymore. But that's okay because we have 48 extra horsepower over that old V8 and a ton of torque as well. And it really feels nice and milky smooth here with this twin turbo V6 as well. And while this twin turbo V6 is awesome, um, for anyone who's curious about something that might be a little more fuel efficient, there is gonna be a hybrid version coming down the road. They haven't detailed anything about what that hybrid version will consist of, but just know a hybrid version is coming for those of you who may want you know slightly better fuel economy than what this offers. And I'll get into fuel economy a little bit later on here. But um, you know, another thing to mention is the towing. So these, I mean, part of the fact that, you know, you have the body on frame thing is you have better towing than all the competitors as a result. And so this tows just over 9,000. It's 9,096 pounds is the max tow rating. It will depend on the trim and all that. I think the lowest amount of towing is like 7,600 pounds roughly, which is still very, very good. But, um, you know, the fact that this thing can tow over 9,000 pounds is really impressive. You have a tow hitch as standard, by the way, which is great. And now we have these rolling hills that we're going over and it just still feels so nice and composed and flat here um, again even with this regular suspension setup and uh, just feels really nice I mean compared to again the last GX you know that had more nose dive and was really wallowy all over the place just because of the fact that it was you know very dated bones um, this is just so so much smoother and the fact that you, know, you have a 10-speed auto it's always in the right gear especially combined with this twin turbo v6 I mean you always have power under your right foot immediately no waiting for a downshift um, no waiting for any any kind of you know engine to rev up it's just always right there and always feels good this is an acceleration in the normal mode <laughs> yeah this thing really flies so uh, yeah I mean I know there's some people who probably would love to still have a V8 but this motor is superior in all the ways here at least as far as performance goes and man yeah it <laughs> feels so good to put your foot down on this thing. And now we've got a couple of tighter corners here coming up just to sample the handling a little bit. Again, no one's gonna drive these like sports cars, but you know, it still feels really nice and flat even with the boxy nature of this thing and the fact that it's you know, gonna be a heavy vehicle, but um, it still just handles really well on us, even on these 20 inch tires, which are the you know, least sporty really. Um, you know, it still has plenty of grip. And so combined with, you know, this really great suspension setup in this thing, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, you know, a body on frame thing, but it honestly really doesn't feel like it is. Uh, it feels, you know, really smooth, doesn't feel really trucky at all. And I'm kind of impressed for a body on frame vehicle this handles as well as it does, because I think, honestly, in my opinion, this also handles a good bit better than the LX. Now, it's obviously bigger and heavier. Uh, it has a different mission, you know, but uh, I just got to say that I'm really impressed as far as body on frame stuff within Lexus and even Toyota. I think this is probably the smoothest uh, that I've encountered from them so far. It just feels really good. Now, I mean, with these insane views that we have here, uh, this very windy little road, I mean, it's just, oh, I love the visibility of this thing. Man, this is gonna be such a great vehicle for people that wanna, you know, adventure anywhere, anywhere that you go where you wanna take in the sights. This is going to just be so good with these massive windows. I mean, look at these views, it is just, really really impressive and uh wow what a what a vehicle to be in for you know a beautiful place like this but uh yeah certainly um i i love the design approach they took with the gx this absolutely was the right choice you know having this huge glass this lower belt line i also love i i don't know how many people still do this but i love resting my elbow on the door frame but i don't do it very often anymore because so many cars you know you have tiny little windows and your elbows at an awkward position but with this I can, you know, rest my elbow like a pretty normal level here and just kind of cruise and it actually feels really good. So it gives you an old school vibe. And obviously this is an old school kind of look in a lot of ways and kind of harkens back to those early, you know, 90s uh, Lexus SUVs and stuff. But I love that old school vibe of this. All right, so now I'm in the Overtrail model, which does have the adaptive dampers as well as these 33 inch tires and, uh, you know, a few other enhancements we'll talk about more in a minute here. But as far as just on on road driving manners here with those 33 inch tires um, you know I mean I do have to say that you feel a little bit more of the road here it's not quite as smooth as the premium plus trim that I was just in but it's really impressive with these adaptive dampers the way that it really can vary the ride like I'm in comfort mode you get a bunch of extra modes here when you get the adaptive dampers I'm in comfort mode right now which is nice and smooth I'd say it feels 
pretty close to actually the regular suspension setup in the Premium Plus, uh, but I think that it's, I still feel like I'm feeling maybe a tiny bit more here actually in this, even in comfort mode, than I do in the regular suspension setup, surprisingly. Uh, but then whenever you go and put it up into the Sport Plus mode that you do have here in this version, um, I mean, it is really stiff. It, <laughs> I mean, it's not race car stiff or anything, but I mean, you feel all the bumps and all the little vibrations on the road there in that Sport Plus mode. But, uh, you know, there is a decent amount of variability there, which is impressive. I'm also happy to say that, you know, these tires, they're 33 inch, you know, all-terrain tires here, but uh, they've actually been developed in partnership with Toyo Tires here, but Lexus really custom tailored them to suit exactly what Lexus wanted them to feel like as well. And so as a result, you know, they're still very luxurious. They still feel really nice. And, you know, I'd say a little smoother than the average, you know, 33 inch all-terrain tire, just from my, you know, limited experience with a few other vehicles that have these but um you know overall it's uh you know still gonna be totally fine it does give you a slightly more rugged vibe which you're you know going for obviously with the over trail trim but now we're gonna do a little bit of off-roading here in the over trail trim and so let's see how this performs off-road so i'm no professional off-roader by any means so i won't get too detailed with my impressions off-road but what i can say is that i was very impressed in addition to the mild trail that we went on we also got to do a very fun obstacle course that really put the gx to the test and did a great job of showing off what it can do as you can see, it's impressive. In addition to those 33 inch tires, 18 inch wheels, and adaptive dampers that I previously mentioned, you get the electronic locking rear diff, crawl control with downhill assist, the multi-terrain select feature with additional modes, along with the electronic kinetic dynamic suspension system, which is an evolution of the old kinetic dynamic system that you had in prior generations. In addition to continuing to allow the front and rear stabilizer bars to unlock for greater suspension travel and articulation, it now can automatically switch back and forth intelligently depending on various factors to keep things as stable and smooth as possible. In practice, the effect is that despite the wild wheel lifting you see going on here. Inside the cabin, it feels a lot more planted and confidence inspiring. And I honestly barely even noticed that I was lifting wheels half the time until I stood outside the vehicle and watched other people driving through the same thing that I just went through. You also get the multi-terrain monitor with underfloor views, which are especially helpful when you're angled in a way where you can't see what's in front of you, like when you have your nose up in the air like that. Overtrails also get unique bumpers with raised bottom corners for better clearance and a unique shape to the middle of the bumper that's designed to guard the under protector and be a mounting point for things like lights and hooks. Speaking of clearance, ground clearance goes from the standard 8.66 inches to 8.9 inches in the overtrail. It also has a 26 degree approach angle, a 21 degree departure angle, and a 23 degree breakover angle along with a weighting depth of 27 and a half inches. The bottom line is that as you can see the GX is much more than just a cool looking SUV for mall crawling and if you want something luxurious that can still tackle just about anything the overtrail can back up its rugged looks with an impressive amount of capability and it was pretty mind-blowing what it was capable of. But the last couple of things I mentioned are fuel economy and then pricing and how it compares to the competition. So first off as far as fuel economy goes these are rated at 15 mpg in the city 20 one on the highway and 17 combined and you know that's not great it's a very boxy vehicle it's got a twin turbocharged you know v6 engine lots of power lots of torque lots of weight and uh, you know the off-road capability of the truck platform and all that you know it's just it's not going to be a recipe for great fuel economy so you got to go into this just knowing that yes you might be downgrading from the v8 you know as far as cylinder counts goes into this v6 but you're not really going to be you know saving that much in fuel economy you, you know probably will get a little improvement but you know, nothing that's going to be wildly different. Again, wait for that hybrid version if that is something that you're interested in. And uh, there's also, keep in mind, the Land Cruiser with its standard iForce Max uh, hybrid system as well and a four-cylinder, which will probably do slightly better fuel economy if that is something that you're interested in. The onboard computer here is showing me 19.3 mpg, but I mean, it's going to vary depending on your driving style and, you know, your surroundings, the temperature, all that kind of stuff, but just, you know, for reference there. Um, and then uh, the last thing I would mention here is the pricing and how it compares to the competition. And I think pricing, they actually did a really good job on the pricing. Lexus has been on a kick with really doing great pricing, in my opinion, on a lot of their new products coming out here. So for the GX 550s here, they're going to be starting at $64,250, and that's including destination. And then a fully loaded one even uh, tops out at $81,250. But being the body on frame thing, it's really unique. And it's the only body on frame vehicle as far as, you know, stuff it competes with as well. But I think, you know, as far as that pricing goes, it's just really impressive. The amount of power that you get, the amount of torque, the amount of towing that you're getting, and the fact that, you know, you have a lot of great standard equipment with, you know, all these screens 
screens being standard, you know, heated and cooled seats is standard. You have a lot of really good stuff that, you know, even if you want to stick to one of those, you know, mid $60,000 price tag ones, you can totally do that and, you know, you're not going to feel like you're in any kind of penalty box. It's still going to be a really nice, lavish, luxurious thing. And so, I mean, I think that that's really, you know, where the best value can be had is, you know, in those lower trims, especially, I mean, certainly nice to have the, uh, you know, adaptive suspension and the massaging seats and, you know, some other things there. But, you know, I don't think any of that stuff is must have stuff and you get have all the must have stuff really, you know, in those lowest trims. And so I think that's why like this premium plus one that I'm back in here now is, you know, going to be really, I think, like they said, the volume seller, they're fully pr you know, predicting this to at least make up 30% of sales. And um, so, yeah, I just am really impressed with, you know, the fact that this didn't get super expensive and there's a lot of gap between this and the LX. Um, and then, so as far as, you know, competition and how this compares to the other competitors out there, the main competitor is the Land Rover Defender. And, you know, like the Defender, this has the very cool vibe going for it with the boxy styling and all that but unlike the Defender I mean this has the true body on frame thing and you know, it does more towing and um, you know I have to also say that you have the Lexus quality Lexus reliability Land Rover is kind of on the other end of the spectrum you know and uh, I mean as far as like resale values you know typically are much much better with the Lexus products um, and there's just there's a lot of perks in addition to the fact this is just cheaper than a Land Rover Defender for a vehicle that is going to, you know, probably last longer. And, um, you know, I just feel like there's really no true competitor since, again, nothing else is actually body on frame. The only other competitor I briefly do want to mention is actually within Toyota here with the Land Cruiser coming, which is going to be on the same platform, same kind of, you know, very cool boxy looks. Obviously, the Land Cruiser has unique styling all its own with round headlamps or, you know, more horizontal uh, headlights there, depending on which trim you get in those. Um, but, you know, the thing with the Land Cruiser is it isn't available with the Twin Turbo V6 here. It's only high hybrid with that iForce Max powertrain with the four cylinder. If you're someone who doesn't want the four cylinder or doesn't want the hybrid thing, you know, the Lexus is going to be the way to go here. And we also don't know pricing for Land Cruiser as of the time of me filming this, but you know, I think they said it was going to be mid 50 thousands to start. And so, you know, yeah, it's going to come in less than the 64 grand of this, but you know, when you load up one of those Land Cruisers, it may end up getting, you know, around the same price point as the GX starts at anyway. And you know, so if there's not much of a price premium to jump up to the GX, get that twin turbo motor, uh, especially if you're not interested in any kind of better fuel economy or anything. I think that uh, the GX is kind of, you know, could actually be the sweet spot here even compared to the Land Cruiser. We'll have to wait and see, you know, how Land Cruiser drives and all that as well. But um, overall, I just think that the GX is really in a class of its own and is just so, so cool. I love the way they redid everything here in this vehicle. I think it's a very well done job here by the Lexus team and uh, overall I am super impressed with the new GX. As far as the volume though, that's one last thing I'll mention here is uh, Lexus is targeting around I think 33,000 uh, units uh, to be sold here this year. So it gives you an idea of just how the availability is going to be. Obviously these are going to be you know a hot item here for all of 2024 and possibly beyond as well. But uh, you know at least they are making them in you know decent quantities here and hopefully they will ramp up that production. Uh, going forward as well but uh, these are still built in Japan by the way and um, yeah they're gonna be available here in February of 2024 if you're watching this right as it's posted but anyway so that's all of my thoughts here on the 2024 GX. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Lexus for providing me here with the all new GX to review for you guys today. Yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to keep these videos coming and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.